subscribe, please. Hey guys, welcome back. It's your favorite Gimp with a Limp, and I am back with Castle Itter. Itter, Itter. Damn it, I can't remember which one it's supposed to be. I think it's Itter. Castle Itter. Yeah. Uh, I think David take, uh, messaged me, or one of you guys messaged me, and was letting me know I was pronouncing it wrong. But we're going to go with Itter, because I was saying Itter before, and I know I was wrong. So, yeah. has to be Castle Itter. All right, where we, uh, if you haven't watched part one where I went over the game basics, make sure you go ahead and watch that because we're really just going to take and jump right back into uh, the game, uh, starting with drawing for the SS cards themselves. So if you didn't watch part one, make sure you watch that to understand where we are in the game itself. All right, now let's take and draw the cards. It's going to be just like in Pavlov's house where you draw three cards and they're going to do things like spawn new troops along here along the edge or attack which is going to affect things like this where you see the uh, defensive icon and as they take damage that'll go down but right now they're all at six which is strong because that means they need to roll a six to actually do damage to us so i'm hoping that it stays that way as long as possible and yeah I'll spawn troops they'll attack they'll move in all that uh, neat stuff so let's just draw our cards and see what we have happening and draw all three and we'll reveal them one at a time. That was a mistake I made in Pavlov's house. I would re reveal them all at once. So we're just gonna reveal one at a time. First card has us, okay, this isn't too bad. This is placing riflemen. This is real easy. You see it says place two. So we're actually going to place two riflemen here on the board. So let's set this out of the way. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna roll twice for each one of the rifle, or roll twice once for each one of the riflemen. There's two through 12, 11 spots around the board. So whatever you roll on 2d6, that's where the guy's gonna be placed. And if there's already one there, I only took out a couple of guys. So hopefully I'm rolling snake eyes or something that equals a five, because I think every other spot, yeah, every other spot has one. So let's take and roll real quick and see what we get. 11, that is going to be actually right here. So we'll take and move that up now. If I had any suppression markers here in this uh, box, I could take an attempt to suppress. But since I do not have any suppression markers in that color, I only have them in black, which was pan over. Again, I'm not uh, fully up on my editing stuff yet. I hope to have a new editing computer soon. Until then, you guys will just have to deal with me panning the camera. Uh, the only suppression markers I have are here. And say, for example, I did have these here in the green box. For each suppression marker that I spent, I could get one die to roll. And if it was equal to or greater than the defensive number of three for the riflemen, they would be suppressed and not actually placed on the board. Right now, I only have them in black, which is the far right side of the board. All right, so that takes care of the first one. Let's roll for the second one, see what we get. We got ourselves a seven. Seven is going to be, okay, this is good. Let's pan over to the right side of the board here. Seven is going to be this top side, okay? We're going to try to suppress this. I'm just gonna spend one counter and see if I can stop him from coming in. So we're gonna roll a single die. Now I could spend all four, like say something came that I really wanted to stop, I could spend all four to try to stop it, but I'm just gonna spend one at a time for these riflemen because they're not horrible. I can try to take them out later just in case, but to show you how suppression is gonna work. Five, okay, perfect. He was suppressed, so that worked really well. He did not actually get in. So that takes care of that. We're gonna take and draw ourselves a second card. Place two more <laughs> riflemen, no shit, okay. We're gonna take and do this again. We'll just keep rolling and we'll see what we get. First one is a six. That is up here, top left for purple. I do not have anything in purple, so he's going to move along. We're gonna have another rifleman. And roll 2d6 again. And I think statistically, you're more likely to roll a seven on 2d6 than anything else. So supposedly more likely they're gonna pop up there, but we'll have to see. This one is eight, which is also here. Okay, we're gonna spend one more suppression counter and see if we can suppress that guy. Need a three or higher, so no one, no two. No one, no two, come on. Big money, no whammy. Three, okay, we suppressed, good deal. Well, we've stopped two out of the four that were supposed to be placed so far, 
So that's actually not too bad. Let's pan back just a little bit. And we have the last card, which is going to be Blaze 2 more damn Rifleman. Damn, I thought I shuffled the hell out of these cards, but evidently I did not. Okay, let's take it and start rolling again. More 2d6. Let's see where we're going. We got four. Four is way over here on the left side of the board. That's right here. So, uh, no suppression. We'll take and move him up. Add another guy and we will roll one more time to see if we can potentially suppress only if they appear in the black and that's eight again okay before i bother to place this guy i'm gonna spend one more of my suppression counters to see if i can stop him come on no whammy no whammy three or higher baby five got him all right suppress we don't even have to pan over Okay, that worked out pretty well. I've got one suppression counter down. Out of six guys that were supposed to be placed, I was actually able to stop three of them. So only three extras got on the board from that first wave. So that worked relatively well, I gotta say. See, we've got one here, one here, and one here. Okay, so the green, red, and purple tracks are ones that we need to take and focus on getting some, uh, uh, some more defenses on. Now, I'm going to slide to the left just a little bit, let you guys see. This is my selection of guys that I've got left to put out. Remember, I was putting out these German riflemen because they suffer from low morale. So they're my weakest troops, and I want to take and risk them first before I'm risking other stuff. But I've already got officers here which will protect those guys. I could put some here in red. I could put some more... I don't have anything in yellow right now, so maybe up here and that position would give me someone going in yellow too, or down here would be a good spot. And that tank is doing so good for me about putting uh, suppression out there. And those suppression rolls are doing really well, so maybe I should get some more suppression counters out on the board. Okay, I know I'm gonna put a couple more German riflemen out. And if I focus on places that already have officers, I don't have to worry about that as much. See, here's green and red as well, which I'm trying to get green, red, and purple covered since I'm kind of doing well over there on the right side of the board. <clears throat> okay, if I do three riflemen, I can put them in the most dangerous positions. Here, here, and here. And then... I'm trying to kind of save my commanders for last so they can use the command to refresh there at the end, like as their action when they're coming on the board. Like these command guys, they can take and give those, uh, the ones that have the C is what I'm talking about by command. Their action can be to refresh three other guys instead of just refreshing one, the, uh, the exhausted side. So I'm thinking if I take and hold those guys to the end, of all my initial troops getting onto the board, I can get a lot of my guys flipped back over and ready for combat. Yeah, it's because I've got four, four guys that have the command status over here. Two of the uh, Americans and then two of the Germans have command status. They could flip over, let's see, that would be 12 guys flipping back over from exhausted, so that would be really, really good. Okay, let's take and put if we do those three guys, I can put two more in tanks. Oh, I got an idea. I got an idea. Okay, this is going to be good. We're going to take and put two more of our tank guys out. Okay, you guys you guys will love this. All right, I got a couple of tank guys. We're going to take and go here, here, and here with the German troops. This guy is the only one who's a potential problem because he doesn't have a German officer with him where he's located, but he's the only one there. So even if there was a casualty there, he would be the only one to take a casualty. So it's not that big of a uh, an issue. Let's go ahead before we move these guys over to the right side of the board. We'll go ahead and take our actions. Let's zoom in just a bit here. We'll take our actions with these guys and let you guys see what they're going to do. All right, first action. I'm gonna draw three of my action tokens here. 
It's going to be that guy, and I'm going to have him take a shot at this German over here. This SS troop that's taken and moving up. See if we can get them knocked back. Where are my knights? Okay. We need a three or higher for his action to see if we can knock him out. Six. Got him. Nice. Okay, we're doing good. We're doing good. Next action. Let's see. Those guys were spent. Okay, this guy. He can fire red. Okay, we'll have him fire red and we'll have him fire purple. See if we can take these guys down. Keep them back as far as possible. Four. Got him. Nice. All right, we've got one more attack coming with this one that we set up here. He's going to attack the top German there that's uh, coming down the purple line, getting close to the house. Four. Got him. Damn, we're doing good. Okay, good deal. Good, 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 good. All right, so these guys are exhausted. Now, you guys will get a kick out of this. Watch this. I'm going to pan back to the right because I'm going to fill my tank out now. Okay, so I've got two tankers here. Now I'm wanting to take and get the suppression. Uh, I can get uh, seven suppression markers from that tank. Let's zoom in and let you guys see what I'm talking about. See right here how it says four, seven, it's got the T, but you also have to load it. So I have to put a guy here to load the cannon first to put a guy here and take an action. So we're gonna take one of these guys, tanker, we'll go ahead and put him there. His action is going to be to load the tank, which is this little icon. So we put that there with him. We know that the tank itself is loaded. And then I'm going to have my last guy that's coming onto the board spend his action actually firing the tank or doing what he's uh, supposed to do. You guys can see it changes the stats of the troop that's there from 1-2 uh, that he normally is to 4-7. So he can take a suppress, uh, suppress action and place out seven of these suppressed tokens. Unfortunately, I can only do it in these black ones. Let's pan back out a little bit, let you guys see. Only in these black circles, but that still gives me eight suppression markers for this side of the board, so I can focus mo more of my actual defenses to the left side of the board because I'm suppressing everything on the right. So let's grab seven of these markers. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, nice, look at that. I got a whole bunch that I can take and throw down in my suppression box. Now that does spend my loaded gun. Okay, so I have to spend that marker to take and do this. So to activate the main cannon of the tank, it's two actions is the way to think about it. Cause you're gonna have to have one guy load it and then another guy take and actually do it. Now, like I said previously, you could have just one guy in here in the tank and one guy could take the action of, okay, let's say it's just one in here, one action, one turn to load, and then he moves for a free action since it's within the same location and then actually fire it on the following turn. But if you want to do it in the same turn, you're going to have to have two guys. It's kind of like uh, the crew served weapons that were in Pavlov's house. This is kind of the representation of that you're gonna need two guys for this weapon and it's two of your actions to take and actually do it. So that takes care of us, pan back out and we will pan back over. I think we're doing pretty good here actually. We're keeping them back, we're keeping them pinned back. We've got uh, a mess load of suppression markers for any of the black circles that come up here on the far right. So if I focus my, the rest of my guys coming in on my defenses on the left side of this board, we should be okay. All right, now we're gonna have to take and draw three more, more cards and I hope to God I'm not getting three more place troops because they could be bad. Although I don't really want uh, the other ones that are coming. None of them are good cards. So let's take and draw ourselves. And remember your game is getting through this deck for the most part. There are is a uh, a auto win card here, end game immediately if the 142nd regiment arrives. And there's a specific condition that places this card in the deck. I don't remember off head, I'll, uh, offhand, I'll have to take and look that up, but I think uh, it actually has to do with one of the cards that's in this deck, places it in there. Or is it when that guy escapes? We'll look it up later, but since I'm uh, 
kind of doing a live playthrough here in the recording. We'll, uh, we'll deal with that later. All right, so first card, second card, and third card for the SS actions. Let's see what they're going to do. No whammy. No place in troops. Place troops. Okay, well, this isn't too bad, but this, okay, this is uh, good and bad. It's only placing one, but it's the Sturm, the... What are they called? The Sturm Guard, the Sturmvik, Sturmvik, whatever German word it was. This is like their officer, heavy infantry, whatever it is. You guys can see their defensive value is actually a five. So they are very hard to kill. I think it's riflemen, the SS riflemen are three, the scouts are four, and then the Sturm guys are five. So they're the hardest. Uh, they're going to be handled just the same way that we did those uh, SS riflemen, those three cards. Anytime you're placing something, it's always going to be rolling 2d6 and then seeing where they go. And then obviously you're going to try to suppress which ones you can. Let's grab our little Sturmo counter right here. You guys can see it's got the, uh, the five on him. All right. And grab ourselves 2d6. Hopefully he'll try to pop up somewhere here on the right so I can spend a couple of counters to try to take him out. All right. And that's 10. That's probably going to be green, isn't it? Oh, no. It is a bomb, right? Yes. Okay, he's in black. Hey, no, we're just a little bit. All right. Right here is circle number 10. So we can attempt to suppress that SOB. How many counters? I've got eight counters to try to suppress him. How many do I want to spend? Because since his is a five, I've got to take and roll a five to take him out. And that's only a 33% chance on a D6. All right, we're gonna spend three counters. That's gonna give me three dice. Statistically speaking, if I got a one third chance on three dice, that should, that should guarantee me a hit, right? Math majors out there, what do you think? All right, let's see if we can suppress this guy. I just need one of these to come up five. Six, that'll work. That will work, okay. Mr. Sturm does not pop in, so we can place him back in our little stack right there. That's good to go. That is good stuff right there. We're holding him back, we're doing pretty well. But you guys gotta remember too, you see there in the bottom right, it says one. We are only in the first deck. The enemy deck is separated out into levels one, two, three, and four. So it's gonna get progressively harder as we go through. So keep that in mind. These are the easy cards that we're drawing right now. So we're doing, okay, this is their little scouting round, should we say. And place two scouts. Okay, good deal. Um, let's take and roll for our first scout and see where he's going to go. Four. Four is, of course, this is pain in the butt. I'm having to go back and forth on the camera to show you guys where they're going. All right. Four is over here on the left. I do not have the ability to suppress. Again, I don't have any suppression markers there, so we are going to get a scout. Rifleman's gonna take and move up into that square. And this is actually good. I think the, uh, the guy that I took out before was there, if I remember right on the previous turn. So if I hadn't taken out the extra guy that was here on red, uh, they would actually have a guy up to here by now. And you auto lose the game the first time any one of these troops actually progresses into the building. So once one of these counters pushes in, not up to this point, but actually in from anywhere around, you're done. So you got to keep them back. King of the hill type stuff. All right, so that was our first one. Let's roll for our second one, see where he's going to go. 12. 12 is actually going to be down here in green. We'll take and push him up. Again, I do not have any suppression markers in green. They're all in black right now. You always got bet on black. So, scout is done. Let's take and... Ooh, mortar. Okay, this is a little different. You guys will see that it has... It places one, so this is like placing a troop... But the difference is a mortar and the uh, machine gunners, unlike Pavlov's house, they do not leave the starting zone. All right. So whatever circle they go to is where they stay. And then there are cards that will make them attack again. So these guys try to disrupt and attack troops that are in whatever position. 
and they're going to roll three dice to do that. Okay. So, uh, let's see, this thing will roll three and I think the machine gunners are two. Yeah. But they both have a defense of four, but the mortar is actually worse. So this is not good for us. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to roll two dice and we're going to determine where he's going to pop up. I'm really hoping I get black here because I want to suppress that really, really bad. Okay. So let's roll. See what we get. Come on. Something black. 12. No, no. Shoot. Knuckle punk. Ah, this is horrible. Okay. So these guys will just get placed here. And let's look real quick because I do believe I don't move up the other troops. Um, mortar counter, do not advance other SS counters. Okay, perfect. It's right there at the front. So he's just going to get placed right here to the side. And you're going to leave him. The scout is not going to move. Damn, I cannot believe I missed that. Oh, if it could have been a couple of spaces that way, I could have suppressed him. I got all those suppression counters and no uh, no mortar to use it against. Now, since he is in the green zone, he's going to potentially target one of these guys that are here, okay, in this uh, uh, south terrace, all right? So we need to take and roll 1d6 to see who he's going to target, and then he's going to roll three dice and compare it to the defense of this area and if he hits which in our case is going to be a six then he's going to take and disrupt one of my guys that are here so i'm hoping that he's going to miss uh let's take and make it sure i'm doing this 100 percent right when you da, 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 roll to c to the combat position and equal uh, da, da, da. yep perfect and if they do receive Say, for example, one of these guys was already disrupted and they took another disruption, uh, they become a casualty at that point. And the disruption, like before, are these little orange lightning bolt looking counters. So let's take and roll our 1d6 and we're going to compare it against the numbers that are in here. So let's see, one is actually up here. So if he rolls a one, uh, I do believe we roll, no, we go to a, the next higher spot is what we're going to go to. So let's take and roll, see what he goes after. He's going after four. Oh, of course, he's going to try to disrupt our officer. This is not good. Okay, so he's going to roll 3d6 now at this point. The mortar is trying to shell our officer. No! And then if he succeeds, he'll become disrupted. Come on. No six. No six. No six. No six! That's what I'm talking about. That is why you definitely don't want these... Um, defensive positions to become weakened because, well, this, it rolled low enough to not hit at all. But if it goes down to a five or four, now you're needing a five or up or four up to take and actually disrupt and cause casualties. And again, remember on the far right, let's take and pan over there just a little bit. The Basat and Jenny over here, it also has the zero. That's one part that's different from all the others in the fact that this place, the tank itself, can actually be destroyed if it takes too many attacks. And if it is destroyed, everyone in it becomes a casualty. So if my tank was destroyed at this moment, all three of these guys would be uh, would become casualties. So if it does start to take and hit that point, it would probably be a good idea to yank those guys out to the gatehouse or somewhere else there on the board to, uh, uh, to protect yourselves. All right, so not too bad, all things considered. I've got a few minutes left. I was only going to do a couple of rounds, but let's take and uh, at least get my next troops on the board first, and then we'll take and cut this video for now. Again, I'm probably going to focus over here on the left side of the board because I'm doing a good job suppressing over there on the right. And I really want to try to take out this mortar because I do not want that guy sticking around. So I need to get someone else over here in green. Let me grab my activation counters back up from previously and lean in front of the camera. All right, so I'm out of my cheap German infantry. They're all out. I don't want to put my command troops out, so maybe I will put out some of my cheaper American troops. I've got a few tank guys left. I've got one German officer left that can go. 
Who else do we have? Uh, that guy's tank. I want to kind of hold him just in case I need him. All right, we'll take out my good guy here. Okay. The Americans are coming onto the board now. All right, I've got one German officer left. I know I'm going to throw him over here into one of these positions to try to help. And these guys, I don't know where they're going to go. You'll notice that none of these American troops actually have a T symbol on them. So none of them can actually operate the tank. So I have no problem putting them uh, in these positions. Ooh, I do have a good position there at the guardhouse, though, that I could use as well. Ah, so much good stuff. Okay. Okay, well, let's go to the right, because I know I'm going to do that now that I saw it. Right over here in the guardhouse, you guys can see it's got a 2-3. Oh, no, it says T. It says T. I can't put anyone there unless they're a tank guy. I was going to take and uh, put one of my regular American troops there, but I cannot do that. I do want to put one guy there to kind of help guard. Ugh. Yeah, we'll just take one of my guys and put him there. I would think that this guy would have a line of sight over here, but he just doesn't. So I want to have at least one of my guys here in the gatehouse. So we'll go ahead and flip him over to exhausted. He's spending his action, and I'm just going to have him fire at one of the guys in the black. See if he can take him out. I've already got a bunch of uh, suppression markers left, so we're going to try to kill. Um... We'll just go up there for number seven, since that's going to be, ooh, pan back out a little bit. Number seven there up in there, top right, because that's just going to be an area that probably gets hit with a lot of guys. Three or higher. One. It's a whiff. Okay. That's all right, though. We can deal with that. We can deal with that. Now, I know the rest of these guys I'm probably going to be putting over here in the main building to help out where they can. Where are we going to go? I definitely want to take him out, so I'm probably going to have Polak go after him <clears throat> because he gets two shots. So he's going to go there in green. Or do I want him to go here? Because I don't have anyone. But this is green, so it doesn't matter which one I put him in. And we'll have him go to one just in case. So he's going to go here and he's going to fire down on that mortar and attempt to take it out. I need one of these to be a four or higher and he only gets to roll two dice, but that's better than all the others I've got on the board right now trying to take out that mortar. I do not want it to stick around on the board. Ah, got him twice. Blam. Mortar gone. That's good shit right there. Okay. Mark him as exhausted and spent. I've got three more to spend. I've got one German officer left. I know I'm going to go here with him, so we might as well go ahead and put him out. And I need to get more fire going over here to the left to try to take out red. It's just my more important troops, I try not to, and this is just me, my strategy. You guys can you know, do whatever you want. I try not to put them in double colored spaces because that's more likely to get hit. You know, obviously it's got two lines of fire. So stuff like officers that are useful for protect or keeping the morale up of those guys, I don't want them to be in a spot that's more likely to get hit. So we'll take and put him here in one. He's gonna fire down on this German uh, infantry over here to the left. He's got one dice. I need a three or higher to take this guy out. Got a three, I'll take it. Three's better than two, better than one. <laughs> All right, so I got two guys left to take and try to get these guys down. Where are we going to go with them? I've only got one guy in yellow, but I'm not taking a whole lot of uh, traffic coming in from yellow. It looks like only uh, three tracks can lead into yellow. One other guy comes in from there. Like, all the black is able to do that, but the tank's doing such a good job of holding those guys back. I really need to try to get some more of the green taken care of because I've got guys pushing up real hard from the green. So we're going to take and spend this guy attacking this lead rifleman here. See if we can take him down. Come on, baby. Big money, big money, big money. No, the one I really needed. Damn. If they move up three more times, that's game for me out of this line. Oh, okay. But if I put one guy here, 
he could fire down on it, but he wouldn't be able to fire till it was closer. Well, if he moved one more spot, and my next turn after this, okay, I'll pan over and show that actually here in just a sec. Is there anyone else that I could potentially go after that would be better? I'm not thinking so. I'm thinking I need to get at least another guy over here in yellow. Uh, and I can't suppress if I put him in yellow. Because uh, well, what I'm thinking is like, if I put him there, I, I want to do some action with him. And his only thing could be placing a suppression counter. If I did, if I put him here, there is no spot that starts that's yellow line of sight. So to do that, we're going to take and actually go here instead and grab us just a single suppression counter and we're going to take and put that in purple that way i can take and try to hold back purple just a little bit as well and one of these guys could take and move into three or four which would move this up out of the way if these guys push any further either one of these guys could take and move over there and actually put some fire down on them now that completes my turn we're close to stopping but i want to show you guys one more little aspect here I only have five troops left to go out onto the board. You guys will see, I've actually got a lot of guys there on the board. So these guys are getting ready to go out. These are all my command troops. All my C's are right here. And I've got one tank guy left to go out. My big thing for this is that I wanted to take and save my command troops to the end. Because you guys see, everyone's exhausted. Everyone on the board is going to be exhausted. So when these guys, when my command guys come on the board, their turn is not going to be spent shooting and attacking like all these guys have done. It's going to be taking and giving uh, restore actions, refresh actions to take these guys off of uh, their exhausted status. That is exactly what your command troops uh, do. You want to have them bringing these guys around because they can bring three guys back for a single action versus spending a single action just to flip over one guy. All right, so you've got to maximize the amount that you're going to have from your uh, your command. Also, once these guys are out on the board on the, that turn, the following turn, that's when I get access to my French guys here in the cellar. They'll actually be able to come out and start doing stuff and inspiring guys, giving them extra dice uh, and cool stuff like that. I don't know where I'm going to put them because the board's going to be pretty well packed out. Uh, at that point, but we'll put them wherever they need to be. I might move uh, some more guys over towards the tank or whatnot. Sorry, uh, truck's driving by at this point. But uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and cut it here. We've got, uh, like I said, one more turn and we'll have the majority of our troops on the board. The only other ones that could potentially come are these reserve units. There are three of those, but I don't think they get a chance to come on the board until like deck three or deck four somewhere around there, but we'll just have to keep playing it out and see what happens. Uh, last little thing before we get off here, the Kickstarter for this game is starting this coming Thursday. I gotta say, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I've played it some uh, off camera, but it's paused now for uh, you guys when I'm filming. I like the game. Uh, you guys know before I liked Pavlov's House is a good game. And for me, this is distilled down into my favorite aspect of the game, which was, you know, the combat. So I actually like Castle Itter better than I liked Pavlov's house. Now, again, if you like the more strategic aspect of worrying about your supplies and do you have this and can you, you know, move things around like they had on the right side of the board of Pavlov's house where you had to make sure you had A and artillery and all the other stuff. Pavlov's house would be more along your lines, but for me, I really enjoyed the combat aspect and the, the king of the hill and tower defense nature of the game, which is the core aspect of this game. So definitely check that out. It's going to be coming from DVG uh, this thir Thursday. They're going to be launching on Kickstarter. I'm not sure what Kickstarter bonuses they're going to have, but I'm sure there'll be plenty on there. Um, last time people could take and actually get there. You see how these guys are named. Well, not this guy's rifleman, but, uh, people could get their faces put onto a, a counter and have their own character in the game. So that was a neat aspect. I don't know if they're going to do that for Castle Itter, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did since they did that for the previous version of the game. All right, we're going to pause it here. We will pick up with the following turn with the German SS coming in and we'll see how they're going to do and we'll play it at least as far as the uh 
the French coming in and see how they do. All right, you guys take care. I'll catch you in the next one.